Here's three Djokovic strategies that you can use to win more matches no matter what your level is. Hey, my name is Ian and over the last 16 years, I've helped more than a million tennis players improve through my videos, podcasts, and top rated book on Amazon. The first thing you should be copying from Novak and every other world class player is to have a plan before each point starts for where your serve is gonna go and where your next subsequent shot is gonna go after the return of service come into play. Without a specific plan in your head before the point starts, we end up just kind of hitting random shots. And I want you to watch all of these points from Novak that are playing on the screen right now. Not only are they not random, they're all kind of exactly the same. He's following a particular pattern that has set him up well in the past and continues to work well for him and many other top players on the WTA and ATP Tour. He's going out wide, stretching his opponent off the courts, and then hitting to the open court on the other side. This starts his opponent off immediately running from side to side in a little bit of a defensive posture and gives Novak the upper hand right out of the gate. There's a lot of different combinations and we're gonna jump into several other options in just a second. First, a note on this. If you were to go down the T and stretch your opponent in this direction, it doesn't tend to be as effective because it leaves your opponent right in the center of the court with equal opportunity to either go to the left or to the right after they've made the return of serve. So what Novak and so many other players on TV do so well is they've really optimized this wide serve to stretch their opponent even just a little bit off the court and then that opens up a big stretching shot on the very next ball which gets their opponent off to the races and now they've got their opponent shifting directions, changing momentum and it opens up opportunities right out of the gate. Another option that you should totally try is after hitting that wide serve and waiting for the return of serve to come into play, frequently your opponents will realize the situation they're in and just start running across the court to the open court. And that leaves the opportunity to be able to hit behind them as well. In other words, if they just got stretched this way and now they're running that way in anticipation of you hitting to the open court, somebody who's a big hustle player and loves running side to side and likes to anticipate, a lot of times will commit in the obvious direction and then that opens up the opportunity to hit in the direction they just came from, which like best case scenario is gonna kind of cross them up and force them to have to be really dynamic, but they also might just go off to the races in the direction that's obvious, and you could just end up hitting an easy winner in the direction they came from. In all the examples you just saw, Novak used this strategy of going out wide, then going to the open court, but it's critical to understand that you should not limit yourself to just that option. In fact, frequently when normal everyday players like us play, going down the tee might work really well because if your opponent is right-handed, then it leads them to have to hit a backhand ground stroke in the center of the court. So you might not get as much advantage as far as their dynamic movement back and forth, but if their backhand sucks, then just make them hit a whole bunch of backhands. And after they've hit something weak in the middle of the court, you can kind of take your choice at that point and maybe approach their backhand or make them hit another backhand and just lean on whatever that weakness is until they cough up a ball that you can easily put away. Other options that could totally give you the upper hand in your service points are aiming for the body, trying to handcuff them, hitting faster, flatter serves, slower, spinnier serves on purpose, serves that bounce higher, serves that are starting from a center position versus standing further out wide, slice versus topspin, different types of spin. Think about this in terms of professional baseball, where frequently mixing up the delivery is gonna get you the best results. Different locations in the strike zone, different types of curve and different types of spin. The goal is to find the delivery that makes your opponent as uncomfortable as possible, then make them do that over and over again. If this video has already been helpful, it would really mean a lot if you would click the like button. Thank you so much for supporting my videos. The second strategy of Novak's that you should start to copy and implement right away is how well he gets points started on the return of serve. He's one of the best returners of all time and part of the reason of that is his mentality is he's not going for big shots most of the time on the return of serve. Sometimes he does when he gets a, a weaker serve that kind of sits there and he has the opportunity to attack on a big point. But if you watch all of these examples here, he's really just targeting right down the middle of the court and he's making depth a priority, which we'll talk more about in a second. But in most, some of these, he actually wins the point outright because of the depth that he hits, 
but on most of them, his goal is simply to neutralize the serve, even against one of the biggest serves on tour, like Medvedev on the other side, and just start each point off on even ground and get himself into the point so that he can work some kind of advantageous pattern or strategy that's been working out in the past. This strategy is really effective for a couple reasons. First of all, when you land inside the court after hitting a big serve like this from Medvedev, you're left with your feet inside the court like this. So if you even just block the ball and put it deep like Novak does here, watch the tec technique that he's using isn't super big or powerful or complicated. He's really just getting his racket behind the ball, making clean contact and just directing it back down the middle. And part of the reason why this is effective is not just because of the starting location of where the server ends up, but also because most tennis players practice ad nauseum moving right and left, whereas moving back and forth a lot of times gets kind of overlooked. So you combine all those things together and when a return of serve lands in a location like this and Medvedev is forced to scramble back quickly and try to hit the ball right off the bounce, frequently it'll just lead to an error on the other side of the court and an automatic win without having to risk aiming down the line or cross court, hitting the ball hard, making some kind of big aggressive swing. Now, was it close to the baseline? Yes, it was, but I promise you that was kind of a happy accident for Novak. He's not trying to put the ball six inches from the baseline, but when you're receiving a big serve against somebody you know, like Medvedev or our version of Medvedev, and you just place it somewhere in this zone here, a lot of times we'll kind of hit that zone on accident a little bit behind it, and it leads to a very awkward, uncomfortable shot for the server. Please hear me loud and clear though. This is not about winning the point outright. Occasionally it will happen, but your mindset should be, we wanna get into this point and build it intelligently. So when you get stretched even out to your backhand side and you just block the ball down the middle like this, like Novak is doing, when you execute that shot and your opponent gets into the rally, and you're receiving a neutral ball like this, you should be celebrating inside that you just absorbed the biggest, best shot that your opponent has on their first serve, or it could be their second serve too. And now you're toe to toe, you're on even ground, and you're battling out with your opponent. That's a huge win, even if it's just a moral victory. If you're not exactly sure how to have pinpoint accuracy with your ground strokes, no worries. I'll link to a lesson in the first comment down below that would show you exactly how to direct your forehand or backhand right down the middle, just like Novak is doing here. If you wanna win as many tennis matches as possible, then you need to minimize your errors, which is why I put together TennisSecret.com, where you'll learn three secrets to making half the errors in your very next match, just by making some upgrades to your positions and your targets and your patterns. It's totally free, so go check it out now at TennisSecret.com. The third strategy of Novak's that you should copy right away is to start forcing your opponents into moving vertically and not just laterally, meaning make your opponents move forwards and backwards and not just right and left. I mentioned just a minute ago, most of your opponents are spending most of their time practicing moving right and left, moving out, hitting a forehand, recovering back, moving out, hitting a backhand, and then recovering back. And players like Medvedev here make their living running back and forth and back and forth and just never missing and being a wall back there. And if you can force them into a different part of the court, a lot of times that makes them leave their comfort zone and do something a little bit different, which can really give you the upper hand as long as it's on your terms. Without the ability to do this, points like this can last forever. When your opponent just goes into grinder mode, puts everything cross court consistently deep, and if you're just trying to out hit them and out blast them by hitting winners, then it can be a really, really long day at the office. So throwing in an occasional short ball at the right time, which I'll tell you what that is in just a second, can give you a change in pace, a change in tempo, and a lot of times that will just lead to an error outright, or if it doesn't lead to the error, at least you're pulling your opponent out of their comfort zone and forcing them to do something different. 
The trap that most of us fall into, unfortunately, is we get impatient when we're playing opponents like this who are making points last forever, and we kind of just will throw in a drop shot just as a bailout shot because we're just sick and tired of these long rallies that are taking forever. And the key is you want to make sure three boxes are being checked when you actually throw in the, the short ball to make them change up their depth. Number one, you want to make sure that you're moving at least a little bit inside the baseline like Novak is here. If you're trying to drop shot from way back behind the baseline and force them to come forwards, honestly, against somebody who hates the net, it could still be effective. But if they have some skill around the net, you're probably shooting yourself in the foot because it's almost impossible to hit a great drop shot from back behind the baseline. Number two, you want to make sure that your opponent, ideally, is well back behind the baseline, like Medvedev is here. If your opponent is already up around the baseline, then it gives them an extra two, three steps, whatever it is, easier to actually get to the ball and do something with it to hurt you instead of it hurting them. And then number three, you want to make, make sure, ideally, that their momentum is traveling somewhere other than where you're hitting the ball. So in this instance, let me back up a little bit for you here. Novak used his strategy of going out wide and pulling Medvedev to his left off the court. And so he's hustling here from way back behind the baseline to try to recover and get into a better position towards the middle of the court. So we're checking all three boxes here. Box one, Novak is inside the baseline. Box two, Medvedev is back behind the baseline. In box three, his momentum is traveling somewhere other than up to the net, which means that we're making him have to change direction and leave his comfort zone, while all those other factors are all in our favor. So in this particular instance, not only does Medvedev have to go forwards, but he's also having to change direction and run around, almost kind of in a circle, around towards the direction that, that Novak actually hit this drop shot. And all of this dynamic movement and changing direction is not something that Medvedev would like to do if he could help it. He'd rather just run back and forth, side to side, 10 feet behind the baseline, and hit forehands and backhands all day. The key here is doing it on our terms with all of these factors, all these boxes checked, so that we're not just phoning it in and hitting random drop shots, and it's actually tactically an advantage to us. If you're not sure how to hit a great drop shot, then check out the lesson that's on the screen right now. I'll show you how to hit one like Alcaraz step by step. Thanks for watching. Put all three of these things into practice, and I promise you'll start being more successful and winning more matches. Thanks for watching.